Hello, it's Natasha. Thanks for joining me today. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I have hundreds and hundreds of classes, all different styles from yoga, Pilates, to fitness, kettlebells, dumbbells. Today, I have a fun sequencing, creative flow, power yoga. It's quite a long sequence. We'll do part one, we'll repeat it and add on. And I'm gonna try to get right into the flow pretty quickly today. We'll kind of warm up as we go. The first sequence will move through a little bit slow, and then we'll hit it the second time quicker and add on to it. We are gonna to start today's practice in Malasana Yogi Squat. I know that's not comfortable for everyone. Sometimes people's ankles or hips don't agree with the shape, so feel free to gather up a block and meet me here. And we'll just take some breaths and get into quick warm up and flow. Take your toes about 45 degrees apart and see if you can pry your knees apart. Try to pull your chest forward into your thumbs. Roll your shoulders back, almost like you're squeezing your shoulder blades towards one another. You'll have a little pressure on the palms, stretching the wrists here. And again, you're either on or off the block. Close the eyes if that feels safe for you. Relax the muscles in the face, forehead, eyebrows, jaw, and tongue. Go ahead and soften the wrists and just bring your fingertips to the mat or down. Take a deep breath in, big sigh out. First couple breaths, just sigh out the mouth. Inhale. And big exhale. <sighs> let go of something. Try to let go of thoughts, judgment, expectations as we come into our bodies, into our practice. Feel free to make any minor adjustments if you're getting a little uncomfortable. Maybe kind of rocking your hips side to side elevating one heel and the other, and we'll come back to stillness for a couple more breaths, this time with that Ujjayi Pranayama breath, done through the nose, if you have a clear nose airway today. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Listen to the sound your exhales make bringing you into this moment, into your bodies, into your, onto your mat, trying to let go of distractions. Listening to your body's cues throughout your whole practice, honoring what each pose feels in your body. If something feels better to have your hips a certain way or your shoulders a certain way, just moving intuitively and owning that, that is what works for you in this moment. You know your body, you know what feels good. We should not feel pain in yoga. A little discomfort as we push through some hard postures, yes, but no pain. All right, float the eyes open and let's go ahead and bring yourself on tippy toes and fingertips, putting pressure down on the toes and fingers and then sink back into the heels. Let's point the fingers like you're pointing your toes. Fingertips and toes, stretch the arches of the feet and the fingers, maybe lift and lower the hips. Lower down into your heels if that's there for you and we'll flex and point like you're just kind of flapping your fingers up and down. Make some tight fists and blink out. If you can, you can come down to seated either on your block or the mat. And while we're blinking our fingers, let's take a low boat, either hovering your feet right above the mat or coming to this shin parallel position. Good. Kind of a modified bent knee boat. Flick your fingers and give those wrists and forearms a shake out. Take a breath here. Lower onto low boat, and we'll just pull that right knee into nose. Nice tight tuck. Straighten out the leg. Split your legs apart. Moving through a very quick warm up, like I said. Left knee to nose. Nice tight tuck. Breathe. L position. Split those legs. Lift your shoulder blades off the mat. Engaging the core, stretching the legs. Good. Pull those feet onto the mat, head releases down, roll the pelvis forward, feel the quads lengthen, 
and then press your hips towards the sky in a low glute bridge, activating your glutes, your hamstrings, pulling your ribs down, hips up, breath here. Beautiful. Roll down the spine like a string of pearls, tuck your chin, and then lift your legs out to low boat. And you can add a little bit of a rocking movement if that works for you. Kind of massaging it to the back, using the core to move you. And let's take a side to side rocking boat. Again, massaging the back, but activating that core. All right, we're gonna rock back up to your boat. Hold here, lengthen the spine. Maybe extend those toes if that's there for you. Bring your feet back down and you can bring your hands behind your back. Start to hover in this little low crab. Rock back and forth from your fingers to your toes. <sighs> Putting pressure in the fingers, stretching the wrists. Good, now walk your feet just a little bit wider and shift your hips up into a reverse table. If it feels good to drop the neck back, feel free. If not, keep it neutral. Roll the shoulders back, chest up, hips up. Have a seat. Flip your palms upside down and give them a wiggle, putting a little pressure on the top of the hands. Beautiful job. We are gonna come up to standing. If you don't need your hands to do so, pull those feet in, press into that malasana we started in. Otherwise, push into your hands. Lift all the way up. Walk to the front of your mat. Give everything a nice little loosey-goosey shake out. Softening, bouncing, and then finding stillness in Tadasana. Feet can either be hip width apart or maybe they come to touch. Roll the shoulders back and down. Tuck the tailbone, firm the belly. Lift up through the crown of the head and take a big breath here. And sigh. Inhale, we'll rise. Gentle back bend, chest up, hips forward, glutes engaging, and halfway fold. Maybe widen your feet if they were touching, and just listen to the hamstrings here. Use the core to hold your back long, and lengthen. You can bend the knees a little bit if your hamstrings still feel tight in this half fold. You can bend and straighten little squats here. Maybe each one getting a little bit bigger. Can your belly eventually meet your thighs? Folding chair, half fold. Folding chair, half fold. Stay in folding chair. And then bring your hands and head to the mat. Melting over those thighs. If you have more space to give, go ahead and try to straighten your knees. But just go slowly and mindfully, bending and straightening in your fold. Shake your head out. Breathe into the back side of the body. Any movements that feel good, maybe rock your hips side to side. If you can reach the ground with your hands, go ahead and do that, even if you need to bend the knees. And gaze forward and start to walk back, finding plank pose. Round the shoulders, tuck the tailbone. Take a big breath in plank as you feel the core firing. Now lift your tailbone and press back into down dog. Any adjustments you need to make, paddle out your down dog, high heels and low heels. Sway your hips and heels from side to side. Go right, sweep left. Feel that side body stretch, sweep right. Sweep left. Widen your feet, maybe mat width. Press your chest back, your mat forward, and then ripple forward back to the plank. Sweeping your hips through, up dog on toes. Open up that front body. Tuck your chin, round your way back. Two more spinal waves. Roll forward, use the core, and then stretch it out as you release the hips. Exhale, tuck the chin, push, and release back. Last one, rippling forward, unfurling, sweeping those hips through. 
Then bend your elbows, land, and do a couple cobra lifts using the back. Roll up, squeeze, lengthening, opening the front body, and release. All right. I'm going to take the back of the palm down again and try to lift your chest, wiggle your fingers, sweep your hands back, legs up, locust, squeeze up and into the midline. Take a breath here, hard, <laughs> and then bring your elbows down under your shoulders for sphinx. Again, pulling the mat backwards, shining the heart forward, shoulders away from ears, heels to sky, a little engagement on the glutes. From Sphinx Pose, tuck the toes under, protract the shoulders, and scoop up through the abdominals. Forearm plank. Take a breath here. Tiptoe the left foot forward just a few inches. Kick the right toes up. You're in a dolphin split. Press the shoulders down to make space for the head and just work on that split for a moment. Now moving through some tucks, right knee is going to pull into the chest, round the spine, maybe nose to knee. Left knee is going to lower as the right toes squeeze up. Thinking of a table on forearms. Now right knee in, hips elevate, nose to knee. Left knee lands, right toes stretch back and up, gaze ahead. Right knee tucks, push the mat forward, round and tuck. Left knee lands, right leg extends. This time, right knee comes forward. Set the knee down up towards the elbows. Look forward and start to straighten the arms, press into the hands. Now this knee is down and you should be able to swivel the foot side to side. We're gonna turn that foot to the right behind you and open up into a modified side plank. You can let your neck release there. And then lift to neutral, kind of pressing the hips forward, exploring micro adjustments, shoulders, hips. Now lifting up, sweep up, use your core, shoulders over hips to the back of your mat. Take gate pose stretch. Maybe circle the wrists if needed. Feel that right side lifting and folding. So I'm not mirroring here, you here. See if you can just listen to the cues. Perfect. Lift the shoulders back up over the hips. Now this right foot is going to swivel again forward so you can sit your hips behind your heel. If you hinge forward at the hips, the butt will get really light, that counterbalance action. So from here, hinge and try to sit your hips back. If you need your hands, use your hands. From here, forward fold. Reach those fingers out long, try to sit your hips back. Okay, on your way up, Cartwheel or sweep the right hand up and behind you, lifting your hips into stargazer. Pull the chest forward, hips forward, press into those back fingers and have a seat. Left foot is going to cross over for half lord of the fish. Make some space for your left sit bone to land and then just breathe into those hips here. Now the left hand is going to cartwheel back, big circle sweep. Left elbow maybe hooks or just reach over the thigh into a gentle twist. Inhale, we lengthen. Exhale, rotate. See if you can look behind you. Beautiful. Both hands turn to the front of the mat. Your bent right leg back here is going to straighten out. See if you can fold forward and you'll look like a little grasshopper here. So maybe you even pull that foot in a little tighter, the left foot towards your hip, and see where you can go. Maybe you can go to the forearms. It's a pretty deep twist. See how that feels. You don't have to go this low. And then again, very optional. We're going to try to sweep our left hand 
towards the outside of the right foot for a baby grasshopper. Pull that right hand towards the shoulder. I like to rock into it so I can get my shoulders forward and my butt light. See how that feels. You could try to lift the right leg, making this little knot, and then rock yourself forward onto the left foot and right hand. Chest and gaze forward. See if that baby grasshopper is there for you. If not, no worries. All good. Go ahead and release it if you were up. Bring both hands down and then bend that right knee back where it came from. We're gonna swivel our hips to the left. So practice just landing your hip and then lifting your hip, pressing into your hands gently. Sweep your hips left. This time, sweep your hips left and just walk the right foot back to a 90-90 lunge. Right hand down, left arm's gonna lift, twisting your lunge, and then make some big circle sweeps in the shoulder. Beautiful. Take the right, left, both hands down, left hand comes down. Right hand is gonna sweep back. So your left foot and left hand are down. Now, pressing into the hand so that we can sweep the left foot back and then see if you can grab onto the outside top of the foot, maybe open up your hand a little bit for your tiger pose. You can hug the heel in and then kick up into the hand. Heart and gaze forward, feel that right shoulder stretching back. Whole front body is stretching while we're activating the posterior chain squeeze. Beautiful. Release with care. Right hand comes down. Left leg sweeps lateral and set that down. Now rock back and forth from a child's pose to table with that left leg out to your side. Beautiful. Now, right arm is gonna lift. You're making a diagonal from right fingers to left toes and thread the needle twist. Reach the right arm under. See if you can comfortably come onto the side of the shoulder and head. Gaze up. The left hand can stay where it is. Or maybe it wants to float behind the back. It should feel, comf it should feel good. And you're breathing through any discomfort, kind of moving and wiggling into subtle variations with the hips and shoulders. So to come out, we're actually gonna keep the upper body where it is. Take your left hand back and walk your left knee back in. Maybe hip width apart. You're in a twisted puppy and sit your hips back. You're in a twisted child's pose. Reach that left arm over the head and another breath here. That is our warm-up flow. We'll be repeating it on the other side. Go ahead and unwind this right hand and reach out in front of you for child's pose. Sit your hips back and take another breath. We're gonna snake our way back to the belly. Gaze forward, bend your elbows, and then sweep your face, neck, chest, down belly lands. Locus, take flight, squeeze your adductors, everything to the midline, back strength. Pull your elbows under your shoulders, find sphinx. Pulling the mat backwards, heart forwards, shoulders down. Tuck your toes, elevate to your forearm plank. If you need to walk your toes a little bit forward or more together, whatever works for you. This time the right foot's gonna step forward a few inches and the left toes split to sky. So we're in a dolphin split, left leg up. Left knee to nose, round the spine. See if you can pull that knee in. It doesn't have to touch, but just nice tight tuck. Now right knee lands as the left toes stretch up. Tabletop leg lift on forearms. Lift the hips, left knee crunches in. Right knee lands, left toes stretch back up. Push the shoulders down. Left knee tucks, elevate to dolphin. Right knee lands, left toes up. This time we're pulling the knee forward. Elevate the right knee, start to pull the knee in and forward. 
Release the weight into your left knee and press into the hands, straighten the elbows. Now we can swivel the left toes, the left foot back and forth. We're gonna swivel it to your left behind you, opening up to the right, modified side plank, release the neck. Maybe wrist circles. By neutral in the neck and then just play around with pulling the hips in a forward and back and the shoulders opening, stacking. Lifting your body up, use your obliques to stack your shoulders and take that gate pose to the back of the mat towards your right toes. Try to sweep the shoulder up and again exploring kind of hinging and stacking. Always these micro adjustments, finding space, connecting to the breath. Lift your body, shoulders over hips, and we sit behind the back heel. So you can swivel your foot forward slightly, pull the shoulders forward, and then gently sweep your hips behind your heel. Now, if you don't like being off your mat, go ahead and scoot yourself forward, no big deal. Forward fold from here, your left foot's on your inner thigh. Go ahead and just find your fold. Big breath in that forward fold. See if you can lengthen out a little bit deeper and try to pull those hips back. As you lift, shoulders over the hips, circle sweep that left arm behind your hip at a diagonal, and then lift onto the shin in your stargazer. Puffing out through the chest and hips. Come back through seated. Taking that right leg over and across, making space for your right sit bone to land, settling into those hips here. Try to just ground into both sit bones. Left arm is going to circle and sweep across the right thigh. So you can just place it wherever it lands or maybe the elbow hooks and your right fingers press down to lengthen. Exhale, rotate, gazing behind you. Both arms are gonna come to the top of the mat and your right leg that's bent back there is going to release straight out. So I am in a tight space. Hopefully you have a little more room to work with. The right foot maybe climbs in a little bit further and then explore where you can go, maybe down to forearms. Thinking of this little seated grasshopper. Maybe you wanna work the upper body, it could be some push-ups. Taking your right hand, seeing if you can reach for the inside of the left foot. <laughs> and then keeping that fold, you could stay here thinking of a left chaturanga elbow, or we can try to lift the foot and rock yourself into baby grasshopper. So you're gonna pull the shoulders forward and then the butt might lift off. A lot of strength in that left bicep and shoulder and a little opening in that right hip and then release to seated. Right where that left foot came from, you're gonna bend it back in. Your hands are facing the top of the mat. Practice swiveling your hips to the right, to the mat. Lift and sweep and left and land. Now lift and sweep to the right and just hop that foot back a little bit to a 90-90 lunge. Right arm's gonna lift. Twisting, little modified or short range lunge. Hug the right knee to the midline and then make some big circle sweeps. Circling out that shoulder. Beautiful. Right hand comes down, left arm floats back. Press into that right shoulder, spread your fingers and grip so the right foot can just effortlessly slip back. Can you grab a hold of the outside top of the foot, hug the heel in, and see if tiger pose is there for you. If you can't reach that foot, you can just do an active stretch, which has even more strength benefits. Here we're going for flexibility if you can grab. Stretch 
stretching that heart forward, feeling that front body opening and the back side really activating with the assist of your hand for leverage. Nice. As you release it, release with care, bring your left hand down and your right leg is going to sweep out lateral. I'm going to turn diagonal lateral and outside of your right hip. Start to move through some child's pose tabletop. And it's up to you if you want to untuck your back toes or keep them tucked. Rock back, rock forward, rock back. Stay in your table. Left arm rotates up and sweeps under. Finding your thread the needle, right leg lateral, right hand can stay to try and gently press you a little deeper into that twist, or maybe it wants to reach up and wrap behind the back. Connect to the breath here. This is our warm up flow, and it's also flow one. So when we hit it on the second time, it's going to go much quicker. We won't be holding the poses, we'll kind of be flowing a little more fluidly. Instead of coming out of the shape, bring your right hand down, press into the hand as you drag that right knee in, knees are about hip width apart, your booty's up in the sky for kind of a twisted puppy, and then see if you can sit your hips down for a twisted child's pose, the right arm can extend out to the top of the mat. Left hand is still threaded under, breathe. Fill up that back body like a balloon and then gaze forward, unwind that left hand and stretch out to child's pose. Wiggle those hips, connect to the breath. And we're gonna move through a sun salutation just to get our bodies used to moving a little quicker when we get back to the flow. Lift up through tabletop, tuck your toes into plank. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. If you know you want to walk to the top of the mat, you can walk there. Otherwise, take a little mini step forward. Start to bend the knees, shifting back into the hips, forward into the fingers, back and forth. Gaze to the top of the mat. And then we're going to explode, lift the hips and press into those hands and shoulders. See if you can pull the feet forward. Halfway lift, Uttanasana, release into your forward fold, wiggle out, shake out the wrists, bend the knees, drape over the thighs. Let's take a rag doll up. So we'll just let your upper body hang, engage the core and then start to roll up vertebrae, five vertebrae, shoulders, and head up last. Get your wiggles out. Here we'll move into a sun salutation with a lunge. Inhale, sweep overhead. Option to back bend. Exhale, let's come halfway. And then sweep into Utkatasana chair. Hips back, heart forward. Bend at the knees, send your hips back. Bring your hands to the mat, walk, step, or jump back. Plank, again through your flow. Chaturanga, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Right toes sweep up, down dog split. That nice tight tuck we practiced in dolphin, do it here. Round the spine and tuck the knee, push the mat forward and then step your foot in between your thumbs. Fingertips, lengthen spine, sweep the arms up over the head, high lunge crescent. Then the elbows, maybe heart to sky, challenging that gaze up. And then right back down to the earth, framing your right toes. Press into the mat so firmly, the right foot slips back. Plank, option to flow through, chaturanga. Upward facing, exhale, downward facing. 
Repeat. Walk your feet a little closer to the midline so that left foot can just sweep up. Down dog, slit. Knee tucks in, round the spine, push the mat away. How high can you tuck? And how smooth can you step forward in between the thumbs? Lengthen and press into your fingers. Sweep the arms over the head as you root into those feet and back toes. Cactus, gentle back bend. Squeeze shoulder blades back, heart forward. Neutral, release to the earth. Frame your left toes, press down, protract the shoulders, slip back. Option two, flow through chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Shake, sway, breathe. Rippling forward through plank, round the spine, hit your plank. Sweep the hips through up dog on toes, back bend. Lower your uh, hips to the mat by bending your elbows and releasing to the earth. You can bend the knees here and wash the feet side to side. If your wrists are feeling anything, you can take a counter stretch on the wrists while you're here, pressing a little pressure into the top of the hand, wiggling your fingers. All right, hitting the flow a little bit quicker and adding on. Locust, squeeze and fly. Elbows under shoulders, sphinx. Tuck your toes, press down, lift to forearm plank. Walk your left foot forward, right toes to sky, down dog split, or dolphin split. Right knee tucks round, crunch it in. Left knee lands, right toes elevate. Now right knee tucks, pulls forward and through, set the knee down. Weight into the knee as you straighten the elbows. Swivel the right foot to the right behind you as you open to the left. Drop your ear to your shoulder, circle the wrist, and then sweep up for gate pose to the back. Lift, we're gonna sit behind the heel, hinge at the hips. If you need your hands or you need to move, go for it. Sitting. Circle sweep that right arm, we're gonna cut some shapes out. Lift the hips into stargazer, push the fingers back. Have a seat, cross the left leg over the right. Make space for your left sit bone and go right into that half Lord of the Fish twist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, rotate. Both arms swing forward. Right leg extends out for seated grasshopper. Maybe you do a little push up here. If you can, you can walk this left foot a little closer and then reach for the outside of the right foot. Option to lift, swing your shoulders forward, hips back and find your baby grasshopper. Come back through seated. Both hands down, bend the right knee where it came from, and then pull your hips up to the left. This time, we're gonna step back to warrior two. So sweep your hips to the left, walk your, or jump your right foot behind you, and take this big circle sweep to warrior two. Widen that left knee towards the left, pull the arms in opposition, bend deeply, keeping that pinky toe grounded and back. Root lock on core, now straighten the legs. Reverse triangle, left arm lifts, pop out through that chest. Reach back down the right leg. Lift. If you feel a little wide, take a slight hop forward and then reach forward for Trikonasana Triangle. We're not gonna go too deep today. So we'll just cartwheel down, find a place that's comfortable, pull the arms in opposition, lengthen tailbone, peel that right hip shoulder and rib cage to stack. So from here, gaze down, airplane the arms wide. Bring your right hip and heart down. 
Swim your hands back to flight. Lengthen the spine. Again, root lock on the belly. Soften the right knee. Elevate the back heel and take off to warrior three flight arms. Soften the right knee again. Pull the, sorry, the left, soften the left knee. Pull the right knee into the chest as you lift to standing balance. Ooh. See if you can ground into those left toes and heel. All four corners of the feet as you lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Keep your left hand under the knee. Sweep your right hand back. Gentle twist. See how your balance is feeling today as you start to gaze behind you. Some days we're falling all over the place and that's okay. No judgment. Bring your gaze forward. Flex your toes. Cross. Open up the knee and hip. Figure four. Chair. I have a little cheat wall to cheat with here. <laughs> Bring your hands to heart center as you externally rotate the right hip. We're adding a twist here. So again, it's a lot of balances. You might feel really wobbly. Just see how it goes. See if you can slip your right forearm to the arch of the foot or maybe deeper. Left arm lifts. Keep externally rotating the right hip. Find a focal point to gaze at. You don't have to turn the gaze up. Bend. Sit the hips back. When you feel like you're falling, we're eventually going to drop that right foot anyway. And then bring your palms to touch. Lower your elbow across your thigh. Four twisted chair pose. Pull those hips back, thumbs to sternum as you stack elbows and shoulders. Take the gaze down. Pick up your right heel and when you feel like you have a good moment, see if you can step the right foot back. Twisted lunge. If you lost it, just try and get back in and if this feels too deep, the right hand's going to go to the mat anyway eventually. So don't worry about hooking if that's not there. If you want to go deeper, you could take a quick bind, bringing your right hand under, left arm behind the back. Another modification would be to lower the back knee if you're struggling today. Otherwise, we're going to take that right hand down, but see if you can reach it out ahead of you towards the top of the mat so we can turn all 10 digits of the toes left, drop the right hip, lounging lizard. You know I love this shape. Feels so good on the right side body and helps stretch with that hip. We're coming right back up, lift, turn your toes forward. This time exalt your twisting lunge, reach the back hand behind you and the right arm up. Puff out through that chest, elevate high onto the back heel, back toes. Big spiral turn behind you. Skandasana to the back to your right. Sit your hips down. All right, so one quick shake to the back of your mat. Spin your left knee down, right hand back. Twisted, exalted, camel, lunge, something like that, mouthful. Reach your chest forward. And then right back to Skandasana, turning left, keeping your right knee bent, hips back. Move your ankles, knees, and toes organically. Now, sweeping to the front, this right knee is going to drop. Heart and gaze forward. You are in Ardu Hanumanasana half split. Lengthen. Here is a good place for blocks. If you have tight hamstrings, go ahead and have two blocks, one on each side of your by your shin or ankle and then explore your split today first you can start to swivel your hips flex and point the toes see if there's a little more space pull your heel forward now if you have you don't have your split but you're low enough to maybe rest a block under your front hamstring this might be a great place to be you're gonna feel that back right hip flexor and quad. Try to lengthen, shoulders stack. Try to square the hips forward. You can explore bending the front knee and dropping into the back hip, or maybe it's your front, the hamstring that needs more of the stretch and send the toes, the legs straight. 
wherever you are, just breathe. And if you have a really thin mat that's bothering your back knee, pad up your knees. You can release the back toes or keep them tucked. Just see what works for you in this moment. No force, we do not wanna pull a muscle in the hamstrings, not fun at all. See if you can soften something. To come out of it, we're gonna push into your blocks or hands, use your shoulders and your core to drag the heel back and land your right hip over your right knee. If you want a little core burner, press your hands into your block or fingertips, round the spine, push forward and see if you can lift this left heel. Lift, try to slip it back, knees meet. Sit into those heels, hips back, take a breath. Mm, inhale, reach it up and exhale, camel to the sky. Come back, hands to heart center. Take a moment. See if you want to take a sip of water, um, maybe go into a quick inversion. You can always hit pause and explore. We are going to go into that second side. And I know it's a long flow. First part we've done three times now, so we'll move a little quicker. And add on all the second half of the flow. Are we ready? So when we snake down to the belly, you can do this from the knees to modify. Or if you're feeling pretty strong, maybe let's hop up into down dog and try to snake here, also known as a dive bomber. Gaze forward, hover your elbows, pull each body part, face, neck, chest, land. Here we are, locust, take flight, inner thigh and hands reaching together. Bring your elbows down, find sphinx, inhale. Exhale, tuck the toes, sweep up into forearm plank. Push the shoulders down, lengthen the tailbone. Now the right foot steps forward, a few inches. Left toes to sky, down dog split, push your shoulders forward. Left knee tucks around the spine. Right knee lands, left toes lift taking a forearm table leg extension. Now lift the right knee, left knee is gonna tuck in and it's gonna land forward. Press the weight into your knee as you lift up into the hands. This left foot can swivel. Turn it to the left, open to the right, drop the neck. Modified side plank and we'll lift, stretch to the back, gate pose. Lift, bring that heel forward just a touch, hinge with the hips and sit behind the heel. Circle sweep the left hand behind your hip and elevate to stargazer on the shin. Come back through seated, right foot now crosses over, drop through right sit bone and twist. Left elbow hooks or wherever you are, just lift and rotate. Big breath. Both hands circle to the front of the mat as the left leg extends straight. Maybe it's a push up, chest and chin down, lift. Feel free to skip your baby grasshopper if it's not there today. You can also hug the right foot in a little closer and more towards the left hand for more leverage. Maybe it's a lift and it's a rock. Shoulders forward, hips back, gaze forward. Press that left hand down and come back. Now the left knee bends again where it came from. Both hands down, lift the hips to the right and then land. Now lift the hips off the mat and hop the left foot all the way back. Warrior two, when you feel grounded, cartwheel up. Lengthen the tailbone. Pry the knee to the right, bend and pull the arms apart. Bend a little deeper, challenge that edge, root into all ten toes, straighten, recline your triangle. Whew, getting hot in here. Lift and reach back. Lift, shoulders over hips. 
maybe a little hop forward, stretch it forward and reach down for Trikonasana Triangle. You're pulling your arms in opposition. You don't need to go too deep because we are folding to half pyramid. Use the core to hold yourself instead of collapsing into the bottom hand. Now gaze down and swing your hands lateral as the left hip drops. Feel free to readjust your feet. Left hip down, heart and gaze forward. Sweep the hands back to flight. We're gonna soften the right knee Elevate the back heel and float away. Warrior three, flight arms. Point flex, whatever feels right for you. Right knee can have a micro bend in it. Then we are gonna soften and pull the left knee into the chest, grabbing at the shin and trying to straighten out the spine. Keep your right hand gripping, left hand reaches back. If you feel like you can turn the gaze, you can take that as well. Core on, rooting into the foot, feeling all the wobbles and shakes. Good, take the gaze forward, flex your foot and cross that ankle over your right thigh. Bring your palms to heart center. Continue to externally rotate the hip as you sit deeper into your figure four chair. And then when you're ready, see if you can take that left arm into the foot, slide it down as the right arm opens. You don't have to take the gaze with your upper hand, but you could. And if you fall out, no big deal, it's probably gonna happen. Maybe you have a wall next to you you can cheat with. Ooh, one side might feel a little harder than the other. Here you go, when you feel like you're falling, maybe try to find your edge, and when you fall out of it naturally, or you're ready, step down, hook your elbow, palms to heart center. Regroup, and then find your twisting chair. Again, it's totally normal to be shaky, wobbly, and falling out of poses. No judgment here. Hips back, stack and rotate. Take another breath. Turn your gaze down, elevate your left heel, and when you're ready, you can try to either hover first or just hop the foot back. Maybe it's a little flamingo hover, and then it's a big step back. If you fell out, try to get back in, and find your twisted lunge. Try to release the hips a little deeper. Any shape you wanna make, you could go for some kind of bind, You can also modify bringing the left knee down and the hand down. See what's working for you in this moment. And then we are releasing down to lounging lizard. Take your gaze down, drop your left hand and see if you can send it forward so you can turn your toes to the right and sweep the left hip down. Lounge it out, right shoulder can elevate, hip can try to relax here. Going right back where you came from. Lift the hips, turn your toes forward. Now reach up and back, exalted, twisting, lunge. Left arm reaches back, right hand behind the leg. Wherever you can reach for, you can wiggle your fingers around your thigh, pop out through the chest. Big turn over your left shoulder, skandasana to the left back of your mat, bring your hips behind you, and then turn to the back as you drop the back knee, left hand reaches for back heel, little twisting, half camel, half lunge. Push your chest up, hips forward, right arm stretches back. Cartwheel up, where you came from, skandasana, left knee bends. Now turning home for your half split, make your way forward and drop your left knee. We're always kind of swiveling on the balls of the foot, bringing your knees, toes, and hips aligned. Here's your half split. Wiggle, windshield wiper the front foot, the hips swing, send the heart forward, 
and then you explore. Grab your two blocks if your hips are tight. If you only have one, we can work here by just trying to slide your hips, your heel forward, and use the block as a place to grab onto, press into. A lot of different ways to explore. You can try to bend the front knee, sink into the back hip a little bit, or you can try to really straighten the front knee, keep the back toes knee bent and toes tucked. Little subtle movements. If you're low enough to slide that block under your hamstring, this is a great place to be. Try to work on squaring your hips and surrendering. You also get the pressure of the block into your hamstrings to kind of assist that release. See where you can soften something. Come out of it. We're going to press into your hands or blocks. Round the spine. Start to take the weight into your hands and the core and slip your hips back over your left knee. For that fun core burner, press your fingertips or hands into the block or mat and see if you can elevate this right heel, rounding the spine into cat. Slip that foot back. Bring the knees to meet and sit back on your heels. Inhale, lift your hips forward. Take a cactus camel, or you can bring your hands to the small of the back or up the rib cage. Or maybe you wanna take a deeper camel. Reaching for your heels, I find it's helpful to tuck the toes under so the heels are a little more accessible. Keep pressing the hips forward and the chest up, and only when you're ready, coming out slowly, and maybe taking a child's pose to decompress. Staying in child's pose, or again, maybe coming up to kneeling, and taking some breaths here with your hands resting in your lap. We are gonna try one different entry into your baby grasshopper. So a different way to get into it. If your hips aren't super tight, it might be a more accessible way because you're coming into it with the hips already lifted rather than trying to lift your hips from the ground up. So let's see how that goes today. Walk your hands out to tabletop. Send your right foot behind you. We're gonna sweep the right toes to the left off of your mat. See if you can really walk your toes over and then pull your right hip back. Tuck your left toes. So here's where open hips will be helpful. We're gonna walk, lift our left knee and walk our way back. Pressing into your right hand, bend your right elbow. Now reach for the foot and see if you can lower your left heel into baby grasshopper. See if that worked. Coming back out the way you went in, drop the foot. Crawl your hands out and lower the knee. Bring that foot behind you and in. Take a seat, maybe shake out those wrists. Let's try the other side. And again, I'm in a tight space, so I'm gonna go a little diagonal. Left toes reach back in tabletop. Cross your left toes as far as you can wiggle or reach to as you swing the right hip back. Then tuck the right toes under. Start to lift your hips, walk back, walk back, walk back. Press your weight into your left hand, think chaturanga elbow. Reach out for your, your right hand reaches your left foot. And then see if you can lower back into your right heel. Kind of hard to know your rights and lefts in this little pretzel position. <laughs> Do your best. Heart and gaze forward, elbow into rib cage, and then let go of the foot, elevate the heel, and walk yourself back out, coming back into tabletop. <laughs> How did that go? Take a sip of water and some calming breaths. Shake out those wrists, maybe counter stretch. Whew. 
Ooh. All right. Let's practice a little pincha. And if that's not in your practice, maybe come to a wall and you could always go for headstand. And we're going to close the practice today. So bring your elbows down in your tabletop position. Tuck your toes under and walk your hips up. Good. Bring your right toes to the sky and then just practice little hops. It might be helpful for you to grip onto a block. So you can take your block in your hands and then you also get a little cheat where you can kind of press your head into the block, but then try to be very light. Be able to push away. Think of tucking your tailbone and trying to find a neutral spine as opposed to just arching back and letting yourself fall over. And you can practice that on both sides. My block's a little tall, so I'm not finding a lot of space for my neck, but the more you push down into the elbows, the more space you're gonna create for the head and shoulders. Good. And then switch, your left toes can lift. You can practice little hops. You could take maybe the back of your head into the block so you don't have to lift the head too high. And then see if you can float away from it. If you have pincha, you can be practicing your own shapes or maybe it's headstand today. You can be mindful that most of the weight, even in a headstand, is in your forearms and you're really light on your head. Beautiful job. Let's float into Malasana, either jump, find a handstand, or just walk your feet outside your hands. We started in Malasana. We're gonna do a little stretch here. Right hand grabs left ankle, right shoulder to inside of the right knee. Widen your feet and press your left hand towards your inner thigh as you reach your body over to the right. Lean, 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 maybe rock, release the neck. Now bring that left arm over the head and see if you can turn the gaze, putting a little pressure into the shoulder and into the skull. Release, left hand grabs right ankle, left shoulder to inner thigh, and you can be sitting on a block Right hand presses on inner thigh, trying to straighten the elbow, drop the head, and lean into your left foot. Now sweep the right arm up and behind the head. Again, a little pressure in the skull, but then also pressing your left shoulder in to get the twist. Thoracic twist, lifting that elbow and releasing it. Beautiful job. Come down into seated and we'll go into boat pose. Elevate your chest, extend those toes up. Okay, feel free to skip this core work if you feel done. Otherwise, we're gonna go low high and then we're gonna alternate legs. Reach right, reach left, reach both. One more set. Reach right, reach left. I lied, one more set here. Reach right, reach left, and stay. Nice. Lower down to the sacrum. Low boat like we did in the beginning. Rock your boat forward and back. And then rock your boat side to side. Get that nice little massage into the sacrum. And low back. Whoo. And release. Give yourself a nice big hug. Drop your shoulders and tailbone into the mat. Maybe happy baby sounds good right now. And then I like to give you yogi's choice time. If you feel open enough for a wheel or you want to plow, shoulder stand, um, hip openers. You could try a little half locus, uh, sorry, half lotus or lotus. Fish, the possibilities are endless. So I just like to give you a couple times, a couple moments. But I just like to give you some moments to listen to your own body and see what shapes you want to create. 
And also just take as long as you want here. They can be restorative shapes. They can be active. You can hit pause and take as much time as you have or desire today. And then I'm gonna cue you through a, just a short Shavasana, but I encourage you to take as long as you need. Corpse pose, walk your feet out to the corners of the mat. Lift your shoulders, lift your hips, and then settle everything down in a comfortable space. Think of tucking your tailbone and landing and then bringing the palms up a little bit away from your body. Pick up the head and just tilt onto the very back of your head. Chin up. Mouth gently opens, just parts as your shoulders and hips surrender. Feel all the points of the body touching the earth. Maybe your heels, your calves, the back of your hands, the tailbone area. Melt your hips, surrender. Soften the face, the forehead, the eyebrows, the jaw and the tongue. Allow your tongue to rest on the top of your mouth. and the breath to naturally expand and release. See if you can completely shut out any wandering thoughts. Just be in your body right here, right now. There's nothing else to do but be here. After all the hard work, honor your body. Give it that time to repair, recover. And really sink in, seal in your yoga practice. And I encourage you to take as much time as you need. I am going to leave you here today. And I want to just be sure to thank you for sharing your practice with me. You have millions of options and I'm so happy you're here. Let me know how class went, if you made it through the whole sequence, how you did, how you feel after class. If you know any other yogis that might enjoy a faster pace creative sequencing, share with your friends. Thumbs up goes a long way. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. The light in me honors the light in you. See you next time.